Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today I am so excited because I'm finally going to be covering an Indian whiskey on this channel. And considering India is actually the second most popular country to watch my channels right behind the USA, I am really, you know, long overdue to do an Indian whiskey. So this is the Paul John Brilliance and it is a 46% ABV Indian single malt whiskey. It's one of the more popular whiskeys to come out of India. So I'm going to kind of go into why. but. I do want to throw this out there. Since a lot of you from India do watch my channel, if there is a whiskey that I need to get my hands on, or if anybody else knows, put it down in the comments. Um, there's a couple I know of, but I am dying to hear of some good suggestions. So let's get into it. A man named Paul John found himself in Scotland and he really fell in love with scotch. And he decided he wanted to open up a distillery, but didn't really want to uproot himself from India. So instead he hung out and he learned all that he could about making scotch. And then he brought all the technique and everything back to India with him. At which point he opened up a distillery called uh, John Distilleries in 1992 and had a very successful first decade where he took his product in Bangalore and ended up kind of going all over the, uh, the surrounding states and everything was going really, really well. So part of why this happened is because they use this special kind of barley and it's called six row barley rather than two row, which you can see in the picture here, there's the two row and then the six row is significantly more robust. It's got a lot more husk to it, right? So what this does is it gives a very unique like tannic kind of um, heavy protein, little oil, you know, it's it's got fiber and everything. And this makes extra fatty acids, makes uh, that tannic flavor like I mentioned. So my first thought when I read this was, well, this, there's no way this is chill filtered. And of course it says right on the back of the canister here that it's not. Otherwise you'd be losing all that goodness to the mesh. So there's really no point in that. But you know, a lot of people, especially you watching this video, can appreciate when something is non-chill filtered versus chill filtered. And you may even be able to pick out the differences. In this, I think you would notice a lot of difference if you chill filtered this. That being said, um, this ends up going through two different copper pot stills and the pot stills themselves have these really long necks. And what that will do is it imparts more of a fruity character to the whiskey. So then they end up maturing it. One of the coolest things that I learned while researching this whiskey is more about the way that whiskey is matured in India. And obviously if you think India, India is really hot, right? So you're going to get a lot more evaporation, but I was surprised to see quite how much. So here's some real numbers for you. So a hogshead right in Scotland after three years would usually produce about 350 bottles. In India, after three years, it's 150. So it's like a third as much, a little bit more, but like significant difference there. And the warehouse that Paul John actually keeps and matures all of its whiskey, they have 6,000 barrels above ground, but then they have another 4,000 barrels below ground, and then they end up rotating them. And because of this, it you get so much of the angel share. It's the, it's said that it's between two, uh, like two percent in Scotland would be the equivalent of 10 to 12 percent in India, which is just absolutely insane. But there is an upside to all of this. Now, I'm you know I'm going to test you for a minute. Think about it. If you have a barrel that is evaporating, or not evaporating, but the the whiskey is going into the barrel, back out significantly because it's so hot obviously it's going to age faster. So the equivalency rate, you know, I mean, you, you can say what you want, but a 15 year old scotch would be all things the same, would be equivalent to a four year old Indian whiskey as far as the maturation process goes, which is insane. You know, you're cutting it by once again, another, you know, actually almost fourth. So I don't know. I thought that was all really, really in interesting information. So let's get into more specifically this whiskey. The Paul John distillery, like pretty much every other distillery, has its flagship products and then some other stuff that it's trying. Now the flagship products in this case are the Paul John Brilliance, which is an unpeated whiskey. Then you have the Edited, which is a lightly peated whiskey. Then you have a Bold, which is a heavily peated whiskey. Now you're not going to find too much peat in India, but they do source it from Scotland and they bring it all over. Once again, more influence from Scotland. It's fantastic. but. What they do, you know, they, they heavily peat this. So then they have a couple of other uh, 
offerings. I believe it's called the Classic and the Peated. Then they also have a couple of more. They have this one called the Zodiac, which I'm going to keep my eye on because I have a feeling, you know, if you're going to call it the Zodiac, you're probably going to do 12 different offerings, but who knows. Um, and then a couple of extra little, you know, limited run kind of things. But this particular whiskey is 46% ABV. It's 100% malted barley. It's only about $55 in the US, which I was a little shocked to see. And in general, let's just jump into the nosing and the tasting because I have been talking for a really long time and I'm getting thirsty. So I love these canisters, by the way. If you ever get a whiskey that comes in a canister like this, you should really consider keeping it in there because it is meant to keep out the light and a lot of whiskeys will be affected adversely by the light. So kind of like software engineers. <laughs> All right. So we got the Paul John brilliance here. Let's go ahead and pour some. I'm just being a little quiet. It's a little late. I don't want to wake people up. So let's go ahead and man, I can already smell the nose. I, don't you love that? Don't you love when the, the nose just kind of comes out of the bottle? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm a good foot and a half away from that bottle and I can already smell it. All right. So let's go ahead and nose this. Hmm, that is a beautiful nose. I'm, I've never tried any of their peated stuff, but I'm really tempted to, because if this is kind of what they're starting with, but then they just peat it, man, I think that this, this is probably a really good representation of an Indian whiskey. Um, anyway, all right. So what I get out of here is the, right at the forefront, you get kind of a very, kind of like a buttery cinnamon. Uh, actually, you know what? Perfect. Think, actually, <laughs> this works out really well. I wrote, I wrote butter, cinnamon, green apple, and slight honey. So in this case, and I just nailed it, and I can't believe I didn't put this together before, baked like cinnamon apples, you know, like almost like what you'd put in a pie. And it's got that with a little bit of sweetness to it, uh, even beyond what a normal green apple would be. So it's, it's almost like, it's almost, actually, it's almost like an apple pie with a little bit of extra honey. So man, that, that nose is delicious or very nice. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a sip. Cheers. Mm. So that is extremely smooth. It's very, very good. You've got kind of a waxy, orangey peel um, thing going on there. Um, think like zesting an orange. Then you've got some caramel, um, actually a little bit of chocolate in there too, which plays really well with the, um, with the, the caramel. Um, hmm. Let me take another sip real quick. Mostly cause I want an excuse to. <laughs> so, um, one thing that I, I noticed and you may have just heard it in my voice there for a second, this actually does have a little bit of a bite to it. Um, not an alcohol, but almost a rye. Um, it's obviously it's hundred percent malted barley, so there's no rye in there, but it has a little bit of spice to it, similar to a really low rye count bourbon. Um, think you've got the sweetness coming from a bourbon in that case, and then like a very small amount of, of spice to the back end there. But the main thing that you're really going to get out of here, in my opinion, before that spice hits you is the caramel. It's, there's no real apple in here. Um, but that nose, the, so the nose doesn't really quite match the taste. But anyway, this is a very, very good whiskey. Um, so let me give you kind of my overall opinion of this. I have had this bottle for a little while. As you can see, it's about half empty. I do not think that the flavor profile of this has changed very much at all. I've, I've legit had this for probably close to a year at this point, and it's, it's basically remained, remained the same. So I would 100% recommend that you get this. I don't know that it's a stock it just because, you know, you might not want to have something like this hanging around um, or more importantly, it might not hang around because it's pretty good. Uh, the fact that this has remained in my bar for as long as it has is strictly a testament to how many different varieties of whiskey I have over there. But this is a delicious whiskey and at $55, man, that's a steal. This is just wonderful. I love this whiskey, in fact, actually. So. Um, Anyway, that does it for this episode of the Whiskey Dictionary. I absolutely think that you should try this whiskey. So there's a couple of quick little points I want to make if you haven't already tuned away, because I know that as soon as I say that's it for this episode, people tune away. So stop doing that, because there's good stuff at the end of each one of these episodes. Anyway, I have, um, I'm going to do something. I have some merch, right? So I have some shirts. And I, I hired somebody to make some shirts for me, or you know the designs. 
based off ideas I had. And if you noticed that right below this video, right above the comments, there's a new little bar that has a whole bunch of t-shirts and stuff in it. So those are all t-shirts that I designed. They help the channel a lot. Um, if you decide to buy a, a t-shirt, I would really, really appreciate it because in general, it's, it's gonna allow me to do cooler things on this channel, get better equipment, review cooler whiskeys, um, go places, do like on, on site things. I'm basically trying to fundraise because I wanna do more with this channel. So if you like any of the designs down there or if you have any cool ideas, submit them for sure. But if you like any of the uh, designs down there, then by all means, please you know consider contributing. Um, if not, feel free to check out the Patreon um, channel. I've got patreon.com slash the whiskey dick and or maybe the whiskey dictionary i'll put the link down below um and there's all kinds of different perks you can get a, a whiskey dictionary uh, glenn karen glass you can get a t-shirt you can get all kinds of stuff so check out the patreon and i hope that you have enjoyed this episode of the whiskey dictionary go buy this <laughs> cheers today i'm going to be talking to you about a single malt indian irash irash Indian whiskey. Three, two, one, go. I am super excited today. Be super excited. I'm super hyped. A man named Paul John, not John Paul, which is what I freaking keep calling this thing. Three, two, one, go.